In an entire decade, how have we gone from the Google Glass, a sleek, functional, and utterly impressive piece of technology, to this monstrosity, the recent smart glasses announcement by Xiaomi? So pour yourself a whiskey, put your slippers on, and join me for a bit of a chatty episode about the state of smart glasses. I'll showcase a few which I think are worth a look at and where I think the technology is gonna go next. Welcome back to another episode of Stu's Reviews. Firstly, let's talk about the term smart, because quite frankly, I think some manufacturers are taking bloody liberties here by calling their products smart glasses. This has led to a spate of recent releases from companies that are making audio glasses and calling them smart. There's calling a pig a pig, and then there's calling a chicken a cow, which is very much the case here, and I just don't agree with it. It's like looking at a Toyota Yaris and saying it's a supercar, and then looking at a McLaren and saying that's exactly the same because it's a supercar. I hardly think the glasses that simply play music and maybe give you the ability to take calls are smart. And in fact, if the primary function of these pieces of tech is to play audio, then really they aren't glasses at all. They're just open ear headphones with sunglasses. The same could be said about smart camera glasses. These aren't smart. They're just cameras with sunglasses bolted onto them. Take a Snapchat specs, for example. All they do is take photos and videos. And they do that really well, don't get me wrong, but aren't they really smart? What do you think? Do you think products like this should be considered smart glasses? or not? Let's have a chat about that in the comments because I'm really genuinely interested in finding out what the general consensus is. But the thing is, that doesn't mean that there aren't some really standout models of smart glasses, but not actually smart glasses, that I really like. And in fact, there's a bunch that I use in my day-to-day -day life, like these from View, which are audio glasses, but you can buy them as shades, blue light, and even corrective lenses. Now, I use these because they look almost identical to a regular pair of glasses, and you can hardly even tell that these are currently connected to my phone and are delivering the audio through small speakers at the back of the arms, allowing me to listen to music and take calls on them. They stand out because of the fact that they are so light, and the arms are perhaps only a fraction larger than actual regular glasses. Another standout smart, but not actually smart piece of kit are these, the Dusk by Ampere, which are nothing short of magic. Now sure, they're functionally similar to the view in respect to delivering the audio at the back of the arm, but they have one feature that is utter witchcraft. Watch what happens when I press this button. <laughs> These are the world's first electrochromic pair of sunglasses that allows you to control how dark you want them through either the button on the side or the connected app. I mean, this is without a doubt a smart piece of technology and perhaps this pair do in fact blur the lines slightly between smart but not actually smart glasses and actually smart glasses. When I think about what it means to be smart and the features for me that would make a pair of glasses smart, there's a few core pieces of functionality that I want. One, it needs to connect to my phone to have some sort of app store to change or add functionality. Two, I think it needs some form of audio, whether that's to make and receive calls, get feedback from voice assistants, or listen to media. And three, and this is the big one for me, it needs a display so that it can deliver information to me in a visual manner. Now, I'm not talking only about prismatic displays in front of your eyes that overlay augmented reality content. I will take any form of visual indicator to count them as smart glasses. In fact, this takes me back to a time I reviewed the Digioptics Motus. God, these were something cooked up in either fiery hells of damnation or, alternatively, a Chinese sweatshop making a wish version of Google Glass. Either way, I reviewed these to much disappointment, but the concept was there. A simple prism that displayed a colour dependent on the notification that you received. And when I say 
concept was there, that's because it probably worked about 2% of the time. But either way, these things did have audio, did have a camera, and did have a visual display of information so that these, I guess, were smart for sure, albeit the absolute lowest form of what I'd be willing to label with the term certified smart. I think when most people think of smart glasses, though, we are all thinking of having a visual feed that can deliver some kind of text-based notification and other information, and perhaps even go as far as offering an augmented display that can overlay onto our environment, and there are smart glasses that can do this. I mean, the Google Glass, a device released nearly a decade ago, was fully capable of doing this. I did a very, very late review on these not too long ago, but in short, they sit on your face, give you audio through bone conduction, and have a camera, and they display information and augmented reality through this little prism just at the top here. But what you could do with these was utterly incredible, especially for a device that was released in 2013. And if you want to find out more about these, do check out the review that I did. Again, not too long ago, I'll leave a link in the description. Now with the release of these, I thought that was it. We are going to get smart glasses now. And I'd anticipated that by now in 2022, we'd all be walking around wearing thin frame glasses and augmented reality, playing a big part in our interaction with technology. But here we are, 10 years later, and there's nothing. How in the name of the gods have we gone from this to nothing? or at least nothing worth noting. Because there are some smart glasses in existence, like the Vuzix Blade, for example, which gives you an overlaid AR experience. Hell, there's even a Google Glass that you can currently buy. But there is a caveat. Me and you can't really buy them for functional use. They're only widely supported for enterprise use, businesses that perhaps want to invest in this new technology for extra benefit. As an example, perhaps surgeons that want a live display of someone's heart rate whilst operating. So realistically, and please do correct me if I'm wrong here, there's nothing available for the consumer right now that comes even close to what Google Glass achieved. A simple experience in a sleek design, and most importantly, with wide support. So if we're not at a point where we're having Facebook beaming directly into the back of our eyes at all times, when will we be at that point? And realistically, I have no idea. There has been a ton of product announcements from big companies, which let's be honest here, I'd be surprised if they ever see the light of day. I keep saying about this, that companies keep on releasing these stupid CGI concepts that are just ridiculous hype reels that do nothing but get people excited before laying them down with either no release or a release so different from what they originally teased, the product becomes a laughing stock. And hold that thought because Xiaomi are a big one here, but I'll come back to that in a moment. Even Google have released a hype reel about a future upcoming Google Glasses product, but all that is, is hype. I want solid, hard announcements and dates. And to be honest, we've had few and far between. The only real solid announcement from recent times was the media smart glasses from Xiaomi, which I showed at the very beginning. Now, these were announced about a month back and have already been released in China for pre-orders and early adopters. But these are a far cry from the smart glasses they announced over a year ago. And let's face it, these are utterly grotesque. It's like they've tried to copy Google Glass, but then accidentally multiplied the measurements by three. Oh, hold on, I'm getting a phone call. Hello? Ah, it's 80s sci-fi Hollywood calling and they want Xiaomi to give them their prop back. With that said, the touted cost of these will be about $400, which is significantly less than the one grand plus price of the Google Glass. And I guess if they have the same functionality as Google Glass, then we could have something really interesting here. I just wish from the bottom of my heart they didn't look like they do. There is one company that I think have inadvertently demonstrated something phenomenal and the potential future of smart glasses technology. That 
is Face Matter or MetaBook or Zuculus or whatever it's now called. I'm not talking about the Ray-Ban Stories Meta Collab. Those are just another pair of smart but not actually smart glasses. No, I'm talking about this, the Quest. Okay, these aren't smart glasses at all, but bear with me here because I think these contain what I think is the most commercially available example of very early proper smart glasses and could be an indication of future Meta products to come. Over the past year, we've seen update after update and tons of refinements to the pass-through mode and it's brought quite a lot of integration of real world into VR world, things like hand tracking, pulling your keyboard and desk and sofa into VR, and even object detection. You can even view the Quest OS in pass-through mode, which overlays the interface onto your own environment, albeit in black and white with poor resolution. But imagine a product like this shrunk down into a more digestible format, like glasses. I mean, they've already announced a Quest Pro, which is due to be released later this year, supposedly. Now, this could support things like color pass-through for even more immersive augmented reality experience and could be yet another stepping stone for something quite special. Now, I'm not saying that we're about to start walking around with things like this on our face. I'm merely saying that if you want an indicator of where things are going, then it's one that you can get your hands on today. Whilst every other company seemingly sleeps and focuses in on enterprises and business use rather than consumer use. So back to the question, why haven't we had any decent consumer smart glasses that come even close to the experience that Google Glass offered back in 2013? And I think the answer is simple. People just weren't ready for it. I mean, think about it. Even smartwatches weren't widely adopted at that time, with the first generation of the Apple Watch only coming out in 2015, which definitely marked the point of wider adoption for sure. Even if you hate Apple, you've got to recognize that point in time. And even products like Amazon Echo and Alexa weren't around till 2014, so people feared this type of technology because of how invasive it was. Invasive to the person wearing it, getting almost unignorable notifications all throughout the day, whilst distracting, doing things like driving or seeing friends and other stuff. And then people saw it as invasive to their own privacy with a camera looking at you all times because it could be spying on you. Hashtag deep state. Anyway, the irony is that a decade later, people willingly invite all sorts of smart technology into invading their privacy, like Amazon Echo devices, which are always listening, and internet-connected cameras into their homes that have been known to be hacked. And we might as well be glued to our smartphones and watches and notifications and social media. And lastly, if I'm not being recorded by a camera at every moment of every day, except when I'm in my toilet, then I'd be very surprised. So it's a new decade, things have changed, and are we now ready for smart glasses? I don't think we're just ready for it. I think we're gagging for it. And I think it's the next frontier for technology. I mean, there's very little more that can be squeezed out of these little black glass slabs other than potentially making them bigger, thinner, better battery, better cameras. And although I absolutely love folding screen technology, there is a very, very small part of me that can't help feel like this is a bit like the 3D telly gimmick. Ridiculously expensive and not widely adopted and eventually fades into the forgotten. I don't know. What do you think? But I certainly feel like we've hit a plateau for this type of technology and people are getting bored. You only have to look at the statistics for global smartphone sales over the past decade to see this. From 2010 to 2016, we saw exponential growth, and then from 2016 to 2021, it's pretty much flat. It's even declined over the past few years. Yes, I'm sure the pandemic had some impact to this, but then again, there could be a counter-argument to say that more people had expendable income as they weren't doing things like traveling to offices. Anyway, growth is on the decline according to the facts. So, will 2020s be the decade of smart glasses? 
I certainly bloody hope so, because it's been a long time coming, and this is a technology that I'm super excited about, really passionate about, and cannot wait to get involved with. So this is a message to all manufacturers, pull your trousers up and get a bloody move on. What do you guys think? Can you not wait for this kind of technology or is this a living nightmare for you? Please do pop your comments in the comment section so we can all have a chin wag. I'd love to hear what you guys think about it. And if you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe and I'll see you back for another episode of Stu's Reviews soon. <laughs> Every time I put this on, it reminds me of what could have been. What could have been? Just look at this thing. Yeah. <sighs>